Hi everybody, welcome back. For those that are new, welcome. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of the videos. If you can, drop a like on any videos that you think are particularly helpful. It'll help me in gauging which videos are helpful so I know which ones to make more of in the future. Today we switched gears and are filming outside just for the fact that it's sunny in Boston and that doesn't happen very often. Just to remind everybody, my name is Justin. I'm a postdoc at the Joslin Diabetes Center in Harvard Medical School. And so the purpose of this channel is to try to help people that are entering grad school or that are currently in grad school um, navigate the waters and try to find a successful postdoc position. That's really what we're trying to do here. And I hope that these videos do help in some way. So today what we're gonna be doing is dispelling the myth that where you do your PhD is important. And I wanna start by saying that that's a really strong statement to make. Of course, where you do your PhD does matter. If you could put on your CV that you did your PhD at Stanford, that does make a difference and people will notice. But I'd make the argument that not just where you do your PhD, but who you do your PhD with is even more important. So take two examples. Take the Stanford example for a second. What if you were in the lab of someone that's a new faculty member at Stanford? They've never had any kind of graduate student before. Now let's say that you go to a small university like me. I did my PhD at Southern Illinois University, but the uh, advisor that I had was a world-renowned scientist. He had many postdocs in, in his past, many graduate students. He's won about every award that you can under the sun. Now, I would make the argument that doing your uh, PhD in that lab is much, much more beneficial than doing your PhD in a no-name lab at Stanford. And that's true for a few reasons. So the first reason is that when you do your PhD, the person that's gonna have the single most impact on who you are as a scientist going forward is going to be your thesis advisor. And everybody knows this. So when you apply for a postdoc position, not only are they looking at the institute, but they're looking to see whose lab did you come from? Whose training have you received? It's always better to receive training from the best than training from someone with no name. That's the first thing to keep in mind. The second thing is that when you have a thesis advisor that really knows what they're doing and is world renowned, odds are at the end of it, you're going to have a bigger CV. So what does that mean and, and how is that important? So we'll take my example for a second here. As I said, I did my PhD at Southern Illinois University, but I did my PhD in a lab with a world renowned scientist. And so what did that mean? Well, when I would apply for, um, and sending in an abstract for a conference, for example. Uh, mine was more likely to be accepted for an oral presentation because I was coming from such a, a, a highly regarded lab. And that's important because it shows that I had oral presentations. I was able to publish more papers, um, et cetera, et cetera. You could go down the list, but you gotta get the point. And so what happens is, is being in these labs, you start to build a CV that's much stronger. So when you apply for a postdoc, you're must, much better off. Um, and the other thing too that I want to have you keep in mind is that when you're doing this, and we're going to go into a whole video on uh, picking a thesis advisor. So when you are starting grad school, how do you correctly identify and pick a thesis advisor? We'll go into that in another video. I kind of wanted to keep this one short. But I wanted to have you keep in mind that when you have these advisors, uh, just because you're in a smaller university doesn't mean you can't go to a bigger university for your postdoc. So we'll take Joslin Diabetes Center for an example because that's where I do my postdoc over at Harvard. Um, there are people that have gone to uh, fantastic universities. So there's someone in my lab, for example, that did her PhD at Max Planck University of Germany, which is an excellent, excellent university. But I would say more often than not, the people that are there are like me. They came from smaller universities, but they came from fantastic labs. So don't think that to be able to do a postdoc at Harvard or Stanford or any of these other schools, that you really had to have done your PhD in a top tier university. That's not necessarily true. Um, the lab that you come from is much more important. It really shapes who you are as a scientist, and it really determines how your CV is going to look coming out of grad school. So I know that this video was a little bit of rambling, but we're gonna do a whole video next on how to correctly identify a thesis advisor. And I think that'll put into perspective the things that you need to look for. And then you could take that and combine it with this video and remember that picking your thesis advisor is much more important than where exactly you're doing your PhD. So 
So with that, I want to say thank you to everybody for watching the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.